Alright, so welcome back once again to our course in ENSC 104. So, uh, we will continue our discussion about vector operations. And recall that in the previous videos, we have discussed uh, vector representation. We also discussed, uh, or we have learned that a vector can, uh, or a vector in a space can be represented by its components, right? So, for example, we have a vector in the x, y, and z axis. Right. So, can be represented in terms of its components. So, it has a component a component along the the z axis. So, it has a component along the z axis. It has a component along the x axis, and it, it has a component along the y. So let's say this is V, the vector V, so V, Z, V, Y, and uh, V, X. So it has a component. And we have also discussed in the previous video about the addition of vectors, uh, if it's in 2D plane or in a 3D space. And basically the, the equation that we're using or the formulas that we're, we're just using is just the Pythagorean theorem right or for the resultant forces it's just simply the summation of um, the x components and also summation of the y components and as well as the summation of the z components right so it fits in 3d and since it can form a right triangle then we also apply the triangle um, the trigo tr trigonometric Right, so those are just the basic equations that we are uh, we're using. Okay, so now we are moving to another um, vector operation it's called the dot product. Right, so it's the dot product of two vectors and a cross product cross product of two vectors. Right, so we'll discuss this one by one. So for the dot product, right, so for the dot product, this operation, um, it's a multiplication operation, except that it's it's specifically a dot product, and it's not exactly the same as the cross product. Um, it's it's a product of two vectors, but for now, if we use a dot product operation for for two vectors, what we get is a scalar. So this operation, product operation, yields a scalar, right? And in terms of vector form, and in terms of vector form, uh, let's say here's our uh, vector A. So let's say here's our vector A and we dot product it with a vector B, then what we get is uh, something like this, A, B, cosine, a theta. It's a, uh, it's a magnitude. It's no longer or it's not about the direction uh, or it has no longer have a direction. So that's why when we dot product with two vectors, what we get is a scalar, right? So in a, in a plane, let's say here's our plane, Right, here's our plane, and let's say here's our x, or maybe we'll use this. Here's our x, here's our y, and here's our z. So in this plane, so if we have a vector in that plane, So let's say we have this vector, um, vector A, right, and we have this vector B, right, so if we make a dot product of, product of this, what we get is something like this, right, so what we get is something like the angle in between the uh, it, it's, it's something like the 
something like the angle in between so that's what we are um, that's what we can we can solve so that's one application of the dot product if we want to find the angle between the two vectors um, then we use the dot product okay and another one is another application is okay, so let's write it here so uh, angle or to find the angle between two vectors okay that's that's one application another application is um, to find the components right to find components parallel or perpendicular so take note parallel or perpendicular to a line so for example here's my vector and let's say here's my reference line we're in um, all right. so if that's gonna be the reference line and I want to find the component of this vector parallel to this line then that would be this component right so this component is parallel to this line and this component is perpendicular to this line right, so perpendicular we use the symbol that um, something like this uh, perpendicular so that's 90 degrees and this one is parallel so we use these uh, symbols right so this will be the vector parallel and this will be the vector perpendicular right so in terms of mathematical notations um, for your the dot product is um, a uh, the vector a if we do a dot product to a vector b what we get is a b cosine theta so again uh, take note of this this is a vector vector a and this is another vector and if we do the dot product what we get is a scalar so this the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine theta right so that's uh, that's one equation that we'll be using and another one is right so let's copy this okay so a dot b is equal to is equal to ax if um, we're given um, the vector notation of a and b then ax times the I mean the product of the x components plus the product of the y components plus the product of the z components right so take note of this uh, work equations so it's just that it's all about the magnitude if this isn't given in let's say ax is sorry um, let's say a is equal to uh, let's say 3i plus 2j minus k and b is equal to let's say 2i minus j plus k so all the x's uh, the product of the x's uh, plus the product of the y's plus the product of the z's or the other one is if we um, if we know the magnitude of a and b actually we can solve that because the magnitude of a is just simply equal to this right let's say 3 squared plus 2 squared plus uh, k squared or 1 right so we get this that's gonna be the value of a so a b then you can um, actually find this cosine theta right so you can equate this if need be right so that's the dot product now let's move on um, before we do a sample problem regarding this dot product um, I think we'll discuss first the principle for the cross product because later on actually uh, uh, it's possible that we are asked let's say we, we are given with these two vectors and we are asked to let's say find the dot product 
and also find the cross products right so we'll discuss first the the cross product okay so cross product so for a cross product um, if we if we cross product the two vector again if we have this um, vector a right so we have this vector a and we have this vector b so let's say here's the plane so I'm drawing this um, in some arbitrary plane right. so let's say here's the plane and let's say here's my x and here's my y axis and here's the z axis that's orthogonal or perpendicular to the to the plane so the cross product is sometimes referred to as a vector product because um, it produces um, a third vector whereas in dot products so uh, recall that in dot products right here if we do a dot product what we get is a scalar it's a scalar so that's why sometimes this one is referred to as the scalar product okay so for the cross product um, so what it means is that let's say if we want to take the cross product vector of a and b then do this then what we get is a third vector right but that third vector is actually orthogonal is actually orthogonal to the plane or is out of plane sometimes referred to as out of plane right so this one is um, a cross b right so let's just name this let's say for example uh, a vector c this is just a cross product of uh, vector A and um, vector B. Okay, so um, in terms of um, direction, so it's a different thing if we say a, a cross B. It's a different thing um, if we say B cross A. So the yield A different vector because the other one is actually um, that's gonna be the other way or the other direction so instead of the positive Z then that's gonna be negative negative Z axis so that's why it's not the same thing because um, direction matters okay so in terms of the uh, the direction we use a right hand rule so how do we know so let's say here's our our right hand right so here's our right hand so you see this uh, these fingers these four fingers actually it curls right so it curls going this direction and the the the, the vector direction is pointing upward right so it's like this so it's it's in this direction let's say counterclockwise direction and it points outward so that's the right hand rule so that means that if we want a B cross A so if we want this then that means sorry uh, this is this should be B cross A already right so this is B cross A because from starting from from vector B going to point A so it's this is not the same thing uh, if we start from A and then we cross with B so it's uh, another thing if we start from A and we cross with B because that would be pointing um, pointing downward right so if we do that um, something like if this is the plane once again right so here's our X 
here's our y and here's our z axis so if it's b uh, sorry a a cross b so a cross b so that means that our right hand should be uh, something like this So something like this. So it points downward. Okay, so in this case, this is A, starting from A. starting from A and going to B. This one is from B going to A. Okay, so if in terms of um, mathematical representation, we can write this cross product in um, something like this. It's actually or, or mathematical definitions is defined as A, B, sine, theta, and we have this unit vector. Right, so this is the magnitude, and we have the unit vector, so that's why it's still a vector. Okay, so in its compact form, actually we can, uh, we can, we, we can write the cross product in a compact form, and as in terms of determinants, so this is a cross b is equal to, uh, in its determinant form, this is i, j, and k. And this is so. Take note. This is uh, the first row would be the unit vectors, and the second row will be the uh, the magnitude or the components of the vector a, a x, a y, and a z. And the third row will be the components or the magnitude of the vector b. So b x, b y, and b z. All right. So in its compact form, we can write a cross product in this way. So it's a determinant. Uh, I, J, K, the first row. Right, so the first row is the unit vectors. And the second row will be the, is the uh, components. Components um, or scalar components of vector A. Uh, I mean, of not necessarily the vector A, but the, the first vector that we want. Right? And the third row will be the uh, scalar components of I think let's just write of the first vector and this one of the second vector right so if it's a determinant then actually we can we can solve it using like We can solve this. Okay, so we can solve this using this. Um, right, so we have here the direction. Um, the I mean for solving the I component um, yeah, let's do this or maybe let's just write this or we can rewrite uh, in some um, s techniques uh, this is rewritten instead so instead of turning around it's just rewritten so this and then that right so those that are going down downwards um, that's or going to the right side that's positive and going to the left side that's um, negative right plus plus right but for this I right, can just write right, so that's gonna be negative so why is this written 
and this size is simply because um, easy times this it just goes to BX so that's just the same thing uh, depending upon which is more convenient with you right so if you write that then that means that um, AX right AX uh, sorry AY AY times BZ times I right plus um, AZ times BX AZ times BX times J and all that right so until actually it's exhausting but there's another um, there's a shortcut uh, specifically for this 3 by 3 matrix so it's this or maybe we'll use another page so let's say a x sorry a sorry a cross uh, a cross b is equal to uh, i j and k and here's our a x a y and a z this one is b x b y and b z right so um, one technique is that right. so let's copy this and let's narrow this one right and once again we'll copy this and and we'll copy once again for the last line right okay so for this one um, for this one so uh, we'll be solving for the I component because each each of this will be solving for the uh, vector component I J and K right so if you want to solve for the I component then let's let's hold this and let's cross out these two right uh, I mean this this first row and the uh, first column right so the the mechanics is that uh, we start with this a y a y times b z right so a y times b z minus a z times b y right so if you write that a y times b z right so these are the two components uh, uh, I mean two terms a y times b z right and once it turns that's gonna be negative minus a z times b y Ag times by, so that's gonna be the i component, right? And uh, this is positive, right? So for the j component, um, if you want the j, if you want to solve for the j component, so let's cross this. Um, we'll cross this first row and this second, um, second column, right? So uh, again, we start with this ax times bz minus a A Z times B X. Right, so if you write that this is A X times B Z minus A Z times B X. And this will be the J component. And just take note that for the J component this will be negative. Alright, so negative. Okay, so last one for the K component. So again, we'll cross this out. Right, so we'll cross this, and I mean we'll cross the first row and we'll cross the third row. So we'll start with a x times b y minus a y times b x. Right, so a x times b y minus a y times b x, and this will be positive. Right, so therefore, um, the the a cross b can actually be solved using this right so therefore a cross b if you want to find a, a vector form then this is just
right so minus the j term of course uh, the minus sign is uh, for this j term but that depends upon the value of uh, the inside term so let's say the inside becomes negative so negative times negative that will become positive right so the same goes true with this uh, this is positive but if the let's say if the uh, net of this um, of this operation becomes negative so negative times positive you get a negative value right so lastly this is plus right plus ax b1 minus ay times uh, minus ay times bx that's the k component so if you have this vector form then actually you can solve for the um, you can also solve for the magnitude um, I mean the, the scalar right so I think that's that's all for this um, dot product and the cross product